voice from behind the door says, Whoops, sorry. Seems I forgot about my burglar alarm. Hope it wasn't too shocking for you. Welcome back! It's good to see you again! As a matter of fact, I just got some candy from my Aunt Jemima. Go on, have a piece! You know you will be sorry if you do, and sorry if you don't. <laughs> That's my auntie, always making me laugh when I'm blue. No, you're blue. That's right. <laughs> Again? We didn't say goodbye long enough ago as it is. What a funny world. You turned Baba into a frog, and she turned me into an ass. She is around here somewhere, you know. I just don't know where for sure. Ah, you should have seen yourself opening the box. Would have died laughing. Shame you weren't there to see it. Ah, my best jokes, and nobody but me to laugh at them! I've lost my jocularity until I can find someone to remove this case. I came to this backwood bird to find Baba Yaga and try to get her to reverse the curse. But I looked all over this place and I ain't seen her, so I'm stuck, dumbstruck, and out of luck. A worse curse for a funny fella like me that never worked. A gnome without a joke is like a donut without a hole. Nothing's missing, but nothing's there either. You don't want to mess around with Baba Yaga. She don't just get mad, she gets like major mad, and then she gets even. Not one to hold a grudge, at least not for long. I heard the word that Baba Yaga landed her hut somewhere southeast of this place. I did a lot of looking, but no finding. Just call me Punny, or oh, Mr. Bones, if you're gonna be formal. I'd be a whole lot better if I could get back my humor. It's embarrassing being a half-witted wise guy. Leaving so soon, Goon? Did you hear the one about the vampire architect? He designed the Vampire State Building! <laughs> always leave you laughing, I always say. Thinking you see a gap beyond the western bushes, you take a mighty acrobatic leap over them. So, did you get it? Show me. I won't let you in without it. You better got everything you need to make the pie. I'll help you cook it, courtesy my buddies here. She's getting hungry. You know, it's a heady experience just talking to you. 
she didn't give you the recipe. All right, let's see. You'll need a pie pan for starch. You'll need bone meal for a crust, grew goo for flavoring, and elderberry berries, of course. You do realize it's supposed to be bad karma to mention the dark one. Eh, what do I care? It can't do much to me now anyway. <laughs> Well, you probably seen the cave mouth. We flew by it in the hut on the way into the valley. Nasty looking thing. It takes some sort of ritual magic to get the mouth to open. I understand someone at the castle has that ritual now. now I'm not too sure what's up in the castle. Baba said something about them being her kind of people, but that could mean anything from ghouls to necromancers. Eh, the castle creatures keep to themselves and we keep to ours. Well, ritual magic usually involves saying and doing something stupid for a long time at some stupid place in order for something just as stupid to happen. You put the bones into the huge mortar. Now what? You work the pestle back and forth in the mortar. It's hard work, but after a while you manage to grind the bones into a fine bone meal with almost the consistency of flour. You fill the flask with powdery bone meal from the mortar. Looking good. Now show it to the head skull over there and get out of the way fast if you don't want to add rump roast to the Baba's menu for the night. The skulls appear to have stopped flashing their lasers. You pick up the pie. It's been cooked to a delicate golden brown. Hey, bird legs! Squat! You quickly step out from under the trap. A moment later, you hear the voice of Baba Yaga. Not very trusting, is he, kids? Good, it's not like I trust him. Floor quick, make him stick! You find your shoes stuck to the floor. Spirits of the swamp and mire, aid me in what I desire. Creatures of the mist, beings of the fog, turn this human into a cute hedgehog. I have a sudden craving for a tiggly wiggly, perhaps some hedgehog grog, hedge piggly swiggly, and pig newtons. Hmm. What's that you say? Elderberry pie? Oh darn, he was bringing that here, wasn't he? I don't suppose a piggly wiggle can get the pie from his backpack, could he? Particularly if his feet are stuck to the floor. Oh, pity. Spirits of the mist and more, restore this man as he was before. So, now my dining delight, do you have what I asked for? I'm hungry. Any other questions? The floor is the one with the spell on it. 
You just happen to be stuck with it. <laughs> There's too little meat on the vile tiggly whittle. That's why I like to make my own hedgehog out of something larger. You'll do nicely if you don't hurry and give me my pie. There is a nasty rumor going on about a certain hero who's about to be fricasseed if he doesn't give me my pie. Mmm, that smells delicious, just the way we like it, fresh from the fire. So, let me think, how should I reward you for such a lovely pie? Mm -hmm. Well, kitty, should we just fry him now, or for an entree have green spleen casserole with roast leg of man? <laughs> Oh, all right. I suppose he did do us a favor. It wouldn't be polite to eat him now. Besides, he may be useful in the future. So what is it that you want as a reward for your lovely pie? I'm waiting for my pie, and you are keeping me from it. Let me see, what do I know? The castle has got some very interesting inhabitants right now. You should visit them sometime when you want an adventure. Do unto others before they can do unto you, I always say. On the other hand, the pie does look lovely. And the kids would get upset if I didn't properly reward you. So, hmm, what can I give you in return for this flavorful favor? You tell about the gnome and how he wants his humor back. Humor, is it? You want a sense of humor? I'm not sure the gnome really had a sense of humor. Making fun of poor old ogresses. Oh, all right. Take this good humor bar and give it to the gnome. I suppose there is nothing more pathetic than a gnome who can't tell a joke. You take the good humor bar and put it away. You've got what you wanted, and I've got what we wanted. Tasty treat, now retreat. Well, I guess she liked the pie, or you would have taken its place. <laughs> yeah, go on in and find out for yourself. If I didn't know you better, I'd be pretty jealous right now. Baba Yaga speaks out loud. That's so true, glue his shoes. You find your feet stuck again to the floor. Oh, back so soon, Cookie Face. I hope for your sake you brought us something to eat. After all, there's always room for hero. <laughs> oh, I'm fine, but a bit peckish, I'm afraid. Have you got something on you for an old ogress to nibble on, uh, besides your toesies? <laughs> You should know my taste by now. Anything gruesome and doosome! <laughs> well, there is a slim chance that you will walk away from here unless you got something up your 
backpack for me, honey. Well, it is true that Grugu makes a lovely sauce for ice cream sundaes. <laughs> so what do you want for this, Cookie? Mm, not too bad. I had wyvern waffles for breakfast, and then it makes a great syrup for waffles. I've heard that you were brought here by those up at the castle. They weren't too happy when you landed in the Dark One's cave instead of their spell circle. Well, they just didn't realize how powerful the Dark Influences are. They are keeping a close watch over you now, though. You should go visit the castle someday. You probably wouldn't get in the front door, but there is supposed to be a secret passage from the graveyard to the castle. Now, what besides talk are you interested in having? The Dark One's cave has been around for many years. It seems it was a place of worship for a cult. They wanted to bring a Dark One into this world. Fortunately for this valley, the cult didn't succeed, I'll tell you. The Dark Ones are creatures of another plane of existence. They are incredibly powerful and dangerous. When they enter this world, they bring darkness, madness, and destruction. Don't mess with the Dark Ones' cave. I'd hate to have to leave this place because you ruined the neighborhood. The Dark One that was worshipped in the cave almost but not quite came into this world. It's now trapped in a limbo state between dimensions. However, its magical aura leeches into this world, particularly at night. That's why things are so much more scenic when the sun sets. The Dark Influences affect spells here, too. Particularly spells which work both in and out of the valley. Crystal Ball Reception stinks. We're magically cut off from most of the world. The castle folks used a lot of magic trying to get you here. You should be sure to thank them for your visit when you see them. What do you want in return for your little gift? <laughs> you asked Baba Yaga about a Dark One ritual. So, you heard about that, huh? I found it in the hangman's tree some years ago. You're asking for trouble, I hope you know. Using the ritual for any purpose will only bring you grief. It can be used in either one or two ways. Its main purpose is to bring a Dark One across to this world. However, a very powerful wizard could use it to send the Dark One back to its world. You don't qualify as a very powerful wizard as I see it. Still, you want it, you got it. You put the ritual away in your pack. Hero near, out of here. Nice of you to drop in. Be seeing ya.
gotcha. Lishy, Lishy, riddle's done. Thank you much for all the fun. <laughs> You grab a handful of rocks. You grab a handful of rocks. After some rest, you feel better. 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 You hear movement on the other side of the door. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. So, Dimitri says the gypsy didn't really kill Igor after all. Then there's that one about the Easter Bunny. Wait, you didn't hear? Oh, that foolish gravedigger fell into a grave and he was trapped by his own gravestone. He's dumber than a styrofoam cup. Right. It's just lucky for Igor the stranger happened to wander by before he starved to death. You are all fortunate that this stranger rescued Igor. You would have burned an innocent man. Well, I still think the gypsy's a werewolf. Well, gypsy returned to his people, I suppose. Yeah, that gypsy camp is somewhere to the east of town, by the shopping mall. I still think the punk was a werewolf. Did you ever see him turn into a wolf? Well, no. Did he have hairy hands or pointy ears like Leonard Nimoy? Well, no. You see, it's all your fault, blathering on about those stupid foolish folk tales. Why, we could have harmed an innocent man. Yeah, I knew all along. There's no such thing as werewolves. Well, Gravedigger returned to town safely, and he can get back to his job overcharging us for those Fakakta gravestones. Yeah, he's even got full medical and dental. After all, the Gravedigger was at work all the time. So to speak. Well, things ought to settle back to abnormal now. <laughs> what with our little buddy Igor returning and all. Hip! We can go back to being open and friendly. And as always, suspicious of strangers. Say, did you hear that the gravedigger returned to town unharmed? Did you know that the gypsy has been released? Were you aware of the fact that rumor has it that you saved both Igor and the gypsy? So you found Igor in the grave? Whew! 
Lucky for old Eeg you came along. Otherwise, poor little Iggy would be dead. Well, at least he had a decent burial. So you found Igor in the grave? Otherwise, poor little Iggy would be dead. Well, at least he had a decent burial. Dinner tonight is garlic stew with vegetables. It was very kind of you to aid Igor. It has been a long time since we have had someone as heroic as you in Mordavia, yeah? Forgive us if we have seemed so unkind to you. It is just that we have lived so long in fear. I was very worried about the gypsy. It was just like those three old yentas to accuse the wrong man. Oy. I'm so glad the gypsy is free. I don't know if gypsies are werewolves and I don't really care. As long as they don't harm anyone, they have as much right to live in Mordavia as we do. Bella. Don't you believe that, Yuri? Uh, maybe. Well, when you see your gypsy friends again, you may tell him that Yuri and Bella will welcome him in town. Now, I, I never said that. Oh, but you meant it, didn't you? You are a man of your word, after all. Oh, that is right. We hadn't been properly introduced. Uh, uh, Yuri? Will you introduce us? This is silly. You've met before. Still, it would be nice to be properly introduced. Please, Yuri? This is Bella Markarov, my wife and keeper of the kitchen. You introduce yourself in return. I am very honored to meet you. <laughs> My husband Yuri doesn't like for me to talk to strangers. He thinks they may be dangerous. But clearly, you are not dangerous. You are a hero. We need a hero here. Bella? Oh, Yuri. I'm just saying how welcome he is in Mordavia. I always leave a sopper out for him behind the inn. He looks strange and a little frightening, but I think he is really a good person. He's always so polite to me. I'm not sure what he means by graveyard humor, though. At least he seems to enjoy himself. The gypsy has returned to his people, uh, I guess. It is a good thing for him that you were in town. Now that Igor is back here with us, perhaps someday I will welcome him into the inn. He was always so strange, and no one had anything to do with him. I never imagined I would miss him before. It is a great relief to me that the Gypsy has been released. I had not been looking forward to watching him burn at the stake. No man should die so hard. voice from behind the door says, Oops, sorry. Seems I forgot about my burglar alarm. Hope it wasn't too shocking for you. Did I tell you about the time there was this guy walking into an inn with this big necrotor following him? He goes up to the innkeeper and asks for some stew to eat. The innkeeper looks nervously at the necrotor and asks the man what his pet will eat. 
And the guy replies, anyone he wants. <laughs> Not bad, eh? You hand the gnome the good humor bar. What's this? You trying the old hot pepper bar on me? Hey, I'm the professional, kid. Don't try this at home. Not on a gnome, anyway. Hey, looks good, though. He eats the good humor bar. Not bad. Pretty good, actually. Hey, I feel funny. I mean, really funny. What was that thing? You tell the gnome about Baba Yaga and the good humor bar. Thanks, pal. Guess this yuck's on me. This jester just can't thank you too much. You're my hero, Nero. My main man, Stan. I've seen heroes come and go, and you're certainly one of them. So you got by with a pie, aye? My, my. Always knew the way to Baba's heart was through her stomach. Probably someone she ate. You know what they say about cannibals? Always having a few friends over for dinner. I am so happy that it reminds me of the time Dimlit the Dwarf came across a magic ring in the bazaar in Shapir. He rubbed it, and lo and behold, out comes a genie. I will grant you three wishes, said the genie. Well, for my first wish, I want a place that's always filled with gold, says Dimlet. So shall it be done, said the genie. There before Dimlet appeared a purse. He turned it over, and a pile of gold spilled out on the desert sand. Again and again he turned it over, and more and more gold covered the ground. Master, you do have two more wishes left, said the genie. Oh, that's right, said the dwarf. Well, give me two more of these. Let me tell you, I'm every bit as happy as Dimlet was. A flying rumor never has any trouble making a landing. I heard that the shopkeeper's husband left her because she was such a scold. She was a person who was quick on the floor. When she wanted his opinion, she gave it to him. Do you know why gnome jokes are so short? So that they won't go over the dwarves' heads! There's no point in telling a dwarf a joke with a double meaning. He won't get either one! Judging from the expression, what you don't know can't hurt you, dwarves are practically invulnerable. Of course, far be it for me to say that all dwarves are just plain dumb. Most are pretty greedy, too. Dwarves get their money the hoard way. They won't even spend the time of day. Dwarves don't care how people treat them, as long as they do. Of course you know what you got when the singing dragon fell into the dwarf mine. A flat miner. And on that note, let's change the subject. Well, now that I'm back in the funny business, it's one more show and I'm back on the road. I'm gonna show these yokels that he who laughs last just didn't get it. Some people spread happiness wherever they go. Others, whenever they go. Fortunately, you are the former. If you was the latter, you'd probably have a few rungs missing. Before you blow, Joe, I figure I owe you one. I'm gonna let you in on a secret only we gnomes know. I'm gonna tell you the ultimate joke. Don't wince, Vince. This is straight, mate. You tell this one, and whoever hears it is gonna laugh. Really laugh. Can't help it, can't stop it kind of laugh. Only works once, and should only be used in last resorts, Mort. It's the last laugh, so to speak. The best jest to the West. Yours for the telling. The gnome tells you a rather silly joke. You find yourself laughing despite yourself. See what I mean, Gene? Tell this joke to a big bad dude that's out to do you in, then exit while he's laughing. Use it or lose it. Bye-bye, birdie! You unlock the door to your room and go in.